Okay guys, so today in this video I'm going to show you uh, what you do after you've set up your geometry and as well as obviously import your geometry, set it up, um, create your wind tunnel, uh, pretty much your box or your block that you create and you split by patch, do all that, check your service repair, um, make sure you have nothing interfering and you've done your booleans, uh, unite and subtracts. So once you have that all set up, um, you can come down here to operations, uh, right click, new. So I've already done it, so I'm just going to show you mesh. Uh, do it automated mesh. And when you do that, you're going to have this little operation pop up. And first thing you want to do always is per part meshing, so don't forget that. Um, next thing you do is you want to select what you're meshing. So we're going to select the subtract. And since we're doing a uh, radiator, you also have to subtract your radiator as well. Um, so we have this selected, and I've already gone through and meshed this, as you can see right here. Um, but I wanted to walk y'all through what I selected and why I selected that. Um, and meshers, I leave everything relatively the same. You can change some of this if you want to mess with prism layers or anything like that. Um, feel free to mess with it. Uh, but this is what I use. So first thing is, you got your default control. So this is just kind of like your generic... Um, general controls for the whole mesh or whatever you're meshing for the whole system. Um, well, so we don't really want too much. As you can see, we have a big uh, area, and you don't want it to be super detailed everywhere. That's going to take a lot of runtime, um, a lot of load on your computer. You know, you can see how I did it. Um, so, see around the car, it's a lot denser of a cell count and so for default controls I don't do anything crazy I just set a generic base size of 0.025 and if we, that's the only thing I change there um, target I believe will leave the same minimum it's going to go through in case I want to see anything um, prism layers I keep two and then I do change the volume growth rate uh, the slow and your maximum cell size to 800 which means in these big open areas it can't get bigger than this size. Um, you don't want it to be too small but you also don't want it to be too big. Um, oops. And okay so while well, you're thinking oh uh, that would be a pretty bad mesh well to combat that we do custom controls down here and in custom controls you can do new service control and the service control pretty much works the same way as the default control except it lets you uh, select specifically what you want within your subtracting your radiator. So, as you see, is my first surface control. I did an arrow. Um, so I selected every, you uh, can see here, every aerodynamic piece of the car. Um, and I will walk you through what I did. So here you just pretty much has all the same things. And uh, you can just do click drop down. You keep parent, just keeps it similar. And custom means you can customize it down here in values. <clears throat> so... If you don't customize any of these values, then they're not going to change. But uh, here you can see in values what we customized. It. So we did target surface size, minimum surface size, and your surface curvature, along with uh, your prism layers and your wake refinement. So for target surface size, we did a percent of base, which is your percentage of your base in default controls. Um, you can also do an absolute size, which is just a direct value, but uh, I just use relative to base for simplicity. Um, then come down to prism layers. Do eight prism layers is normally what I choose. You can see right here. Our prism layers, they look good. Um, this is our prism layer thickness. And the reason why you want to keep it um, something in terms of four, I believe, because of how the prism layers work. If you have a random number that's not in terms of four, then it would be hard for them to merge with your, uh, the rest of your mesh, and you'll have like more weird areas, if that makes sense. Um, so here you can see it smoothly blends out to a big, bigger mesh, while if you didn't, if you had an obscure number, just some random number, uh, it would be a lot harder to blend. So. For your prism layer thickness, you want to make sure you have something of a value of 4. And I use 
Um, Infinite minimum surface size. I just did five percent of base, and then surface curvature. So if you have a lot of curvature, a uh, bigger number here will obviously help um, with that curvature. And since some of these leading edges and trailing edges and parts of the car are pretty curved, this kind of helps refine it up a little bit. And then you come down here, weight refinement. Uh, first, I changed my distance to one, and your coordinate system because of your direction of the flow. And then your spread angle, uh, this mesh isn't completely accurate. I changed some things. I forgot to add some things, so it's a little rough on the wake refinement. But you get the idea. So I use 20 degrees, just what I found. Um, you can feel free to experiment with it. Come down here, you got your isotropic size. I do 100% base. And then your trimmer wake refinement. I use slow here, um, as you can see. And then that's all for arrow. So we do that. Come back down here. So general wake, um, just anything behind the car. Like I said, I changed. I forgot to add this, so it's not currently here. But I will remesh it for y'all. Um, general wake. I just select the back end of the car, pretty much. So I did the, the body and the rear wing. And you can see, I, all I changed was my rate refinement, and I just had a longer distance and. Again, your direction and your angle. Um, for isotropic size, I did 200% of base and very slow on this one. And then now we have our ground. So since we're going to be doing a moving ground along with a moving car, uh, you know, we want to keep it somewhat of a decent mesh on the ground, uh, more importantly than the symmetry planes and the roof and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I just did 200% of base, and that's all I changed there. And service control, it's kind of like a general um, thing for my whole rest of my wind tunnel besides my ground. So I selected the symmetry planes, the inland outlet, and all I changed here was my target surface size, made that 800% of base. And that's all my mesh settings. Um, Y'all can feel free to change them or do anything you like, but this is the results that I got for within less than 2% of accuracy in the wind tunnel. So this is what I just used for simplicity and uh, accuracy between my runs. Um, try like to keep it the same. So I'm not changing too much, so uh, I know what is being affected when I do rerun a simulation. Um, but I didn't really go into detail of what everything means so, like, a lot of these things are pretty important. Um, like, your prism layer total thickness, your prism layer stretching, all that. Uh, definitely needs to be, definitely need to understand what that is and why you would need to change it or if you should change it. Um, I would suggest definitely doing some research on that before you run any of these and make sure you have a clear understanding of every single feature in your mesh and Oh, I forgot to show you something, but not just know how to do one setup, but why you do it and what other options there are out there. Um, it's very important. And w I forgot to tell you, but when you're setting up your mesh, you're doing operations. I'll just show you real quick. New mesh, unmade 2D mesh. You want to select your radiator and your subtract. You do service remesher, unmade service remesher. Oh, I'm sorry. Service remesher, unmade surface repair. Trim cell measure and prism layer measure. Those are the four things I select uh, when I do my automated mesh. You just push OK. And I'll give you this operation down here. And once you've changed it all, or you've entered all your data in, you're going to go up here to your automated service mesh. And just like your Booleans, you just execute it. And you'll see it running down here. Uh, Probably help to not have the mesh scene open. It'll run a little faster. But this normally takes for a full car model, depending on your computer, probably like 10 minutes. But yeah. Um, after this, once you have your mesh completed, you want to check for any indecencies in here. Oh, also, I forgot to mention the big thing is uh, in your surface control, which is just all your other planes of the one tunnel beside your ground. You want to make sure you don't have prism layers on. So you go here to prism layers, 
and this is if you want to custom it or leave them how they are, but you disable them. So it's very important to you disable your prism layers for everything that's uh, not your ground, pretty much. Or all your walls that aren't your ground, so here, I'll show you here. But besides that, um, you should be able to run your mesh, and you want to check it, make sure everything looks good. Uh, your small geometry isn't too butchered up, especially your leading edges and trailing edges. Um, everything looks good. Definitely inspect your prism layers. Make sure they look good and your thicknesses and your stretching and all that. But, yeah. Um, thank you for watching and hope you learned something. Goodbye.